Oh, well, two years ago, my mom told me to come to the hospital because my dad wasn't feeling well. I showed up to find him crashing in the ICU with complications from stage four colon cancer, something we didn't even know that he had. Miraculously, he made a full recovery, but he spent six months in hospital getting better, and I spent every one of those days supporting him as a family caregiver. That is unbelievable, Andrea. Um, and you are not alone, because according to our next guests, eight million Canadians are currently unpaid family caregivers, and they need our support. So here to tell us more is the executive director of the Petro-Canada Caremakers Foundation, Layla Fence, and also caregiver, Catherine Smith. Welcome to the show, both Welcome. of you. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Layla, I want to start with you because Petro Canada Caregivers Foundation, it has been supporting unpaid caregivers, family caregivers right across mm -hmm. this country since, since it was founded. That was in 2020. Yep. Um, why is this a cause that you think needs to be uh, a top of mind mm -hmm. for all of us? I think you just mentioned it. You know, there are one in four Canadians right now who are family caregivers. That's eight million people. One in two over the course of our lifetime will become family caregivers. So when you think about the universality of that issue, it's something that people need to be made aware of. Mm -hmm. And so since the foundation was started, we've been raising awareness of the cause. Mm -hmm. And we're really proud to say that since we launched, we've given $7 million in financial grants to 175 wow. charities across the country who are all supporting yeah. family caregivers on the front line. Great. That's fantastic. All right, and that's incredible. Okay, so this year you uh, got a new campaign, yep. and it's called <laughs> Lighten the Load. Mm -hmm. um, it's featuring this weighted vest that we are wearing. People are wondering why we're wearing this. What can you tell us about it? For sure. We know that family caregivers take on so many different tasks, and the burden on them is quite a lot. The, um, it's a weight that they carry that's emotional, it's financial, and it's time-based. We did some surveys to talk to family caregivers about their experience, and we know that they're giving, on average, 19 hours a week in addition to everything else they're doing. They are paying $500 a month to support their family caregiving. And we know that um, many of them have passed up promotions while they're taking care of their loved one. Right. We also know that um, over 50% of family caregivers under the age of 55 have told us their mental health is suffering and their personal relationships are suffering. So when you think about all of those things that they've taken on, we decided to create a wonderful visual representation yeah. in terms of a weighted vest mm -hmm. to draw awareness to the cause of family caregiving. So thank you so much for wearing them. They look great on. What's the weight? What's the weight on these, Layla? 36 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> That's about right. Significant. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, well, Catherine, you're featured in the Light in the Lone cam campaign as a family caregiver to your boyfriend, Ben. Yes. And it's a role that was thrust upon you uh, back in 2018 when Ben was severely injured mm -hmm. on a trip abroad. Yes. Do you mind sharing what happened on that trip? Yeah, so it was 2018, December of 2018, and Ben was in London, England with some friends and unfortunately was mugged. And luckily, stay People nearby saw, yeah. they called an ambulance, but his mom got a call from the hospital saying that he had a severe subdural hematoma, which is mm. severe bleeding on the brain, which was causing increased pressure on his brain. So they said, get here right away. He might not make it through the night. So we, his mom and I, we flew over there uh, as well as the rest of his family flew over there and if you've ever flown to London before, usually the flights aren't until the evening. So yeah. we get the call in the morning and had to wait yeah. all day, which oh. we ended up getting there the following morning. And luckily he made it through the night. Um, but the doctors told us it was unlikely that he was gonna wake up. Mm -hmm. And if he did, he would probably not eat, walk or talk. Um, he did wake up and he started to progress. We ended up staying in the UK for six weeks until he was okay to fly home. And then he was in rehab here for a month and then he declined very quickly mm -hmm. and we ultimately had to go back to the hospital where he we were for four and a half years wow, wow. four and a half years and you detail everything he went through but ben was actually non-verbal after the uh, following the assault and he spent uh, a bit he was in bed for three years afterwards that's a very long time mm -hmm. and he needed a total of 66 reconstructive surgeries Wow, um, you were 25 years old when all of this started. How did your life change after yeah. this? So it changed drastically, of course. I think when you're 25, you're very focused on yourself. You're going out with friends, you're working, you're traveling, and all of a sudden you're not, no longer doing that. Your focus becomes someone else. But also it was more than a job to me. I made it my 
life. Mm -hmm. I went to every doctor's appointment. I researched meticulously every complication, every medication. Mm -hmm. I went back to school. I took a linguistics course wow. to better understand <laughs> how speech and language processing works, uh, cognitive development to better understand memory development. And it was everything, everything to me. And I, I loved doing it for him. Oh my mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. uh, Layla, Catherine's story shows us that caregiving, of course, is an act of love, mm -hmm. but it can be incredibly challenging just listening to that. How can caregivers access support through Petro Canada's caregiving? Foundation. Absolutely. I think the first thing is if people want to visit caremakers.ca, we have a resources page on that website. There are a number of fantastic provincial organizations listed there, which should be people's first stop to look out for help that's specific to their uh, immediate situation. So I would encourage people to visit that. Okay. Yeah, that's great. All right. And Catherine, what does it mean to you to know that Petro Canada is supporting families like this? It means everything. I think in the story of caregiving, caregivers are often... Yeah. the side character, mm -hmm. right? They're not really the main character in their own stories. And the Petro Canada's Caremaker Foundation are amplifying those voices and are making them the main character. And I know that it means the world to the caregiving community. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's so moving. Uh, we can't let you go without asking, how is Ben doing today? He's great. He's actually here today. Yeah! Yay! Awesome. So good to see you. Oh my gosh. Um, that is so beautiful. I'm trying not to think about it too much because yep. I'm going to get really choked yeah. up. <laughs> to both of you, thank yeah. you so, so, so much for all of this. I know it's very emotional. It is, yeah. It's so emotional. Yeah. Um, and for sharing and opening up. Yeah. You know, it's very vulnerable. Um, and Ben, it's good to say this. I'm so happy you're here. Yeah. yeah. So happy you're here. Um, if you'd like more information on how you can help support caregivers through Petro Canada Caremakers Foundation, be sure to check out caremakers.ca. It's that easy. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.